Hey guys, how are we doing? So we're back on another Nux Taku video, honest anime descriptions, and I thought this would be cool because it's different, because it's not like My Hero Academia related, it's not Naruto related, it's not all the stuff that usually goes on on the channel. This is Tokyo Ghoul related. Now I've not seen Tokyo Ghoul for a while, so I thought this would be quite funny, and would serve as a nice reminder as to what happened, because I'm going to start watching Tokyo Ghoul re soon. <laughs> And, because, uh, yeah, I haven't got around to that yet. I'm sorry. Um, but I love Dunks Taku's um, funny, honest anime description. It's always quite good, and I thought it'd be interesting to see his take on a different show. So, every Tokyo Ghoul season one episode, one to six. Honest anime description. So let's just get straight into this. Yo, what's cracking, fan base? And welcome to another episode of Honest Description. This time, honestly describing every episode of Tokyo Ghoul season <laughs> one. To one. Six. I've never done this episode style, but hey, I figured why not try something wacky. Yeah, give it you a go, man. An honest description is yet. Kind of feel bad for you because you're in for the shock <laughs> of your life. Honest has air quotes, though. So <laughs> just know that. So starting <laughs> with episode one. In case anyone was wondering what genre this anime was gonna fall into, it starts off by saying, "Hello, I am a horror anime. Let's throw a mangled corpse at a window as a cringy jump scare to set the tone." Yeah. Now we don't have to ever do anything like that again. Okay. Now. It's very much does that. With an epic fight scene between badass ghouls, but it has no visuals because you know money. <laughs> like, it sounds pretty gruesome. Either really gruesome or really intense sex. <laughs> Sure, but I wonder if this will become a trend. Spoilers, it totally becomes a trend. Yes, it does. Yes. Nonetheless, <laughs> we can't have a whole story without a protagonist, so let's introduce the main dude. Yay. Who will hopefully not be one of those MC pussies we see everywhere. Oh, nah, no. He totally won't be. He will be. This isn't Evangelion, where he's a total bitch that randomly gets either forced or lumped into a deadly situation where his only active thought process is taken up by being horny. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it totally that's is. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> so, Normie's main character meets Bimbo. Follows her into a dark alley due to the power of her boobs and blammo. Blammo. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but since I love in-depth analyses, especially on how a story gets set up, whether seriously or satirically, Frise, one of the most powerful ghouls, mm -hmm. gets killed, saving the protagonist, because metal beams fell on her. Yes. yes this is the defining setup of Tokyo Ghoul's yes. narrative. Well. And I will bring it up again, but the completely sensible episode one fun does not stop here. Because let's <laughs> spend a moment on how Kaneki became part ghoul. Well, he was injured and there was a dead girl next to him. Hey, let's make a sandwich! Yeah, let's just take Please those bits and totally would give them them for this illegal operation, And there were absolutely zero spare organs anywhere with ghouls running willy-nilly. Aside from the plot armor that Kaneki was saved, there also happens to be plot armor that after she's crushed, and he's crushed, they have all the right completely whole organs between the two of them to fill up Kaneki. Coincidence? I think... <laughs> 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 Finding corpses in an abandoned warehouse may be a giveaway. Yeah. Well, anyway, Kaneki's alive and well. That's all good. Yeah. I guess they flushed what was left to freeze it out of I don't know. But the point is, when Kaneki opened his eye, no one noticed his ghoul shotting gun. <laughs> his ghoul shotting gun. Yes, extremely dumb luck counts as plot armor. By Domino. Way, so I guess it's plot armor too. And no, don't even try to convince me that the doctor set up everything. <laughs> Because knowing where they'd be, killing just Rize and getting away with this highly illegal operation <laughs> is just too much. It's and a lot. Now Kaneki is ghoulish, and like Bear Grylls, the rest of the show is going to be where he can find his next bite. Because ghouls have different taste buds, which no amount of technology can tell apart, apparently. But okay, even though neither Kaneki's tongue nor brain were replaced, somehow his taste buds somehow still change. Oh dear. But the good news is, there's no bad guy yet, so he can acclimate to this change. Then, a smirking guy fixes his glasses menacingly without even showing his eyes. Okay, so now we have a bad guy. That was pretty subtle. <laughs> well. I can understand how most people think, hey, maybe it's a total coincidence that there's a random dude over there in the shadows fixing his glasses, but, you know, an analyst like me can pick up a bad guy if he wants. Anywho, <laughs> Kaneki's not sure if he's really a ghoul. I mean, hey, he only wants to eat flesh and has a shining gun. Maybe I mean, come that's on. not enough of a reason <laughs> to prove he's a ghoul. Maybe he just thinks he turned into a woman or something? I Maybe. don't know. <laughs> but he figured that he has the perfect trial run. He'll slash himself with a piece of glass, and hey, if he's a ghoul, he won't get cut, because ghouls are immune to that stuff. But if he's a woman, yeah, it would affect him. I mean, to be completely honest, I don't know if 
that was his exact one. But since he didn't speak it out, it I definitely guess was. That had to be it. And he tested it out, where if he'd be wrong, he'd be dead. Yeah, good move, stabbing yourself in the chest, fam. Not, you know, nipping your pinky. Well, in any case, <laughs> at least now he's sure he's a ghoul. Yeah. And mm. This is also apparently a plot point that, you know, ghouls are impervious to this kind of slashing and stuff, and uh, this will come up again. Epic foreshadowing. <laughs> Episode 2, Yay. the Kaneki is in an alley, because as you know, Japan is like 80% alleys and he gets attacked. Oh it would no, seem that way when you watch never everything. survived anything without major luck before, what's he gonna do? So Toka saves him. Yay. Almost thought he'd break character for a second and do something himself. <laughs> that was a close one. Then we get our obligatory visual cutout when there's either cannibalism happening or, you know, that wacky kinky stuff. Or some sort of combination, which strangely kinky. enough, is becoming more and more likely. This is why anime uproar calls Tokyo Ghoul cannibal porn the anime. Then Toka shows her annoyance at Kaneki, because, you know, Tsundere powers by throwing a decapitated head at him. Damn, and I thought I was original when I used to do that. Although, thinking back, it really worked wonders. And it's my highest recommendation for any parents struggling with bratty kids. <laughs> it's cheap, biodegradable, actually pretty fun and strangely effective. But then we learned groundbreaking information. Okay. Ghouls don't only eat corpses, but they can also ingest coffee. We don't know why. It seems pretty random and weird, but hey, being a ghoul ain't that bad. But no time to think about that because... <laughs> High school time! Yeah, this is a dark anime about ghouls and high school! At high school, you're so right. Oh my god. Hide sees Nishio with Girly, who's still wearing her jacket. Oh no, he saw so much! <laughs> oh well, typical teacher stuff happens, and Nishio punts Hide across the Bam. Nah, fam, don't worry, he's main enough character enough to survive that kick. And we also need two episodes of Kaneki walking at the end of season two, which I intend to get to! So yeah, obviously, that is not enough to kill frail Hide. But the fact that Hide doesn't remember any of this... Oh, does he? And it's time for Kaneki to finally win something by mastering his Kagane. It's basically glowing tentacles that come out of his asshole. Yes. Yeah. We desperately needed a little bit of tentacle action to get into the cannibal born anime. Now we're tentacle getting action really fun. Cannibal and Kaneki, with zero training, wrecks his foe, who had plenty training. Which is yet another show of plot armor. Three out of plot three. Armor. Congrats, Kaneki. <laughs> Glad you won on your own, though. Time to regenerate your body now because you got stabbed through your stomach. And and I guess also regenerate your clothing. I, I guess. I mean, maybe oh, ghouls yeah. can do that too. I mean, he's no best genius, but like, <laughs> come on. And this would be way too happy of an ending for an episode. Cut to the crazy old guy. Cut to the crazy old guy. Oh boy, that crazy old guy old looks guy. crazy. Blends right into the atmosphere. Episode three. Holy shit, we're moving slow. I'm rewatching this all for y'all. Hope you're enjoying or at least getting triggered or something. And it's terrible, because now I'm bobbing into all the plot holes. Like, oh look, Kaneki's so making coffee with milk. Meaning either he can have milk, and the barfing milk scene in episode one was a plot hole, or he can only have milk if it's mixed with coffee. In which case, anything mixed with cocoa beans are edible to ghouls. Like cookies. <sighs> I hate plot holes, but also I love them. I'll try to move on. That's amazing. The detective guy set up a secret meeting to find Jason, because they have his liars. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Whoa, that'll lead them right to him. Yeah, this wasn't helpful at all. In fact, that whole meeting scene was pretty useless, just showing that, you know, Whoa. there are humans that are also trying right to think to about him. things. It's not all about ghouls and cafes. So let's get back to this some important oh stuff. My God. You know, like Gramps telling Kaneki to eat a sandwich, but remember to puke it up later because it's unhealthy for ghouls to actually digest normie food. Pretty interesting. Mm. Weird that they said it's because they have mm. different taste buds. Pretty sure taste buds don't make bad tasting things poison, but moving on. This episode so far, pretty lame. You know, meetings, coffee, taste buds. Give us more edgy ghoul stuff. Yeah. We need a break from cute coffee shops. So Kaneki goes with white hair guy. White hair guy is a badass. White hair guy has white hair, therefore white hair equals badass. Remember this logic, it will come up later. Kaneki at the end of season, Arima. Kaneki has black hair, so Kaneki falls off the cliff like a klutz. White hair guy saves him. More blood armor for Kaneki. Yay! Pretty much sums up everything that happened up till this point. Kaneki, you've earned your mask. On to anime skrillex! <laughs> Don't be too long. We have a lolly for you to fall in love with by teaching her vocabulary words since you're the most boring person on the planet. Great! That was episode three. Episode four! Kaneki goes to a bar. Oh, my God. With characters even more irrelevant, irrelevant. than rice gum and they talk literally about God. nothing so then kaneki has tea 
too. Not coffee, by the way. Pay attention to this stuff. Oh, the weirdest fetish lord of all oh, time. Oh god, yes. This guy gets aroused by Kaneki's blood when he cuts himself on the teacup. I said when he cuts himself on the teacup. When he cuts himself on the teacup, even though in episode one he stabs he himself, himself, himself with a knife. Oh my god, there's so much inconsistency with this. By that. I never realized. Of course, you know it's a teacup, the teacup of doom. <laughs> And of course, there's cannibal porn involved, but because this is Lord, now they throw Kaneki into his private coliseum that somehow Anteiku, home to some of the most powerful ghouls, never heard of before in their oh lives, even though there are literally thousands of ghouls in that arena. And that is when Fetish Lord throws the handkerchief with Kaneki's blood into the stands. Seems like a pretty irrelevant detail, but you'll see why I mention it later. And you're probably wondering how Fetish Lord is going to get himself out of this one. Well, he whispers in Kaneki's ear at the end. Oops, JK lol, might be. Let's forget this whole, you know, me trying to kill you thing and eat you. That never happened. And yeah. all was right with the world. Episode Everything was five. okay now. Toka has a human friend that made her food. So she's eating that food, even though it's basically poison to ghouls to prove to herself how good of a friend she is. Is this supposed to be metaphorical storytelling? That, oh, she really wants to be human. <laughs> he thinks he's people. Anyway, Fetish Lord anyway. magically got his orgasmo ghoul tampon back somehow that oh. he threw into the crowd before that I told you to pay attention to and remember. Because the writing in this show is tighter than Kaneki's pussy. And now Fetish Lord is doing fetishy things with it. Let's yes. not stay on this subject. It's a bit creepy. Instead, let's talk about Teacher Guy, who aside from trying to kill the two main characters, didn't really do anything wrong. And his girlfriend is totally okay with the fact that he's trying to kill people because he's not killing people she cares about. Literally, she actually says that. Yes. One thing about Tokyo Ghoul is you cannot dismiss its cast of well <laughs> done and well characters. Says. Episode 6, the epic climax. Oh my. Of all the characters fighting each other. Yay! Everyone who used to be bad to Kaneki went full Tsundere to help Kaneki defeat the Fetish Lord, who afterward also becomes a Tsundere. Oh him. my god. But then, when Toka is about to eliminate the human witness, the human says, Wow, you're pretty. After she sees people she cares about getting torn to shreds, and Toka goes, Aww! After being completely close to the idea of sparing her, and everyone lives happily ever, ever after. after. You know, slowly training the line between a cutesy virgin love story and edgy cannibal porn. That's the kind of thing that all of us crave. And then we meet my boy Jason, who has a new set of pliers, the ultimate attack weapon of all time. <laughs> he legit says that. He legit calls this the ultimate attack weapon of all time. Are these writers <laughs> even trying? Well, clearly, they are. Because this is how they're identifying the ghouls they're after. By asking random mother and daughters on the street to take a look at a bloody hand drawn picture to ask if it rings any bells. Pretty dumb, oh right? My yeah, I thought so too. But it worked because a random family <laughs> saw that they were asking about a picture and started running away. And of course, these police guys saw a family running. Oh my god, it's so, so badly written. Obviously, isn't it? they were ghouls. These guys are literally so sharp. They should just have taken over the whole task force in Death Note. They'd have caught Kira in an hour. I want a part two, that was good. Nice. <laughs> I want a part two, that was good, that was really good. I love how many mistakes he points out as well. Like, no, on the teacup. He cut his finger on the teacup. The teacup. <laughs> but previously, <laughs> he tried to stab himself with a knife. That just, oh my god. Note that he's adding milk when previously. <laughs> oh man, Nux is so funny. I love it. Love it, love it loads. Anyway, that was good. I like something. Uh, to watch things a little bit different every now and then. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. It's all of you guys next time.